That guy. So, <clears throat> assignment number 54, uh, problem number one. I say there's a difference, like you'll quickly recognize that the, your favorite problems on this worksheet are the ones that do not have the two different roots. Because um, those are just, if you're good at quadratics, there's a couple essential skills, but those don't ever really feel, you don't ever really feel a burn on those. So let's talk about problem one. So it starts out as, uh, I don't know why I put parentheses, I'll put those in a minute. We have x plus two on the left. And then on the right side, we just have the root of six x plus 67. So this one's pretty pleasant. I would just tell you if if there was anything to say about this, it would be that if the root weren't by itself, uh, like for example, take a look at number four. You can see on problem four how there's a root, but the X is over there with it. You really should move that X to the other side first. So when, when you get there, and we're probably not gonna wind up doing that one together, but just pro tip, if the problem only has one root, get it by itself. That's gonna help you a lot. Yeah, we're gonna square both sides, yeah. So when I square, remember whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So the only place anyone generally is gonna get hung up on a problem like this is, and it does break my heart a little bit, is that that left side, what's up kid? We are on problem. Thank you very much. Thanks for the fix. So where people are going to miss this is going to be on the, thanks again, on the left-hand side. And I, you know, I try it really hard to get it to a hundred percent, but I'm usually a little shy of that. So try to be in the percent of people who understands how to do the left side, right? Don't say something rookie, got to like X squared plus four. What is this left side when we square? Perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, just to, to kind of coach you through the steps again, if you take yellow guy and square it, you get X squared. If you take purple guy and square it, you get four. And I will say in all my years, people just don't miss that. Like, you don't get any gold stars though for that. Like that's easy. The, the kicker is you got to multiply yellow and purple together and then double what you get. So that's going to be the critical skill for a problem like this. And then on the right side, there's really no meat on that bone at all. If you square it, you just lift off the root. You just get 6x plus 67. Yeah, we're just going to flush it all over to the left and solve it. So a little bit harder maybe than the ones before, but this is just a few minutes of uh, really uh, the only main hurdle is the square square multiply double. So if you pull everything over to the left, you get x squared and you get minus 2x. Subtract the 67 and you get minus 63. And I would assume by this point that uh, since you and I are like six weeks from parting ways um, after a couple of years of algebra work, I would hope that you can factor this down. <clears throat> we know we're looking for some combination of a nine and a seven. One of them has to be positive. One of them has to be negative. I want the heavier number to be negative. So I'm going to put a minus nine and a plus seven. Therefore, my solutions are x equals nine. And x equals negative 7. So I planted these throughout because I really want to make sure you understand and respect. Like I, what, I, what I was careful not to do is I don't want to make it like there's 12 problems and on one of them you get an extraneous solution. There's a ton of extraneous solutions all over this worksheet. So I really want to drive, po drive home the point that like you can't just like put boxes around those and say, I trust it. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's not about if it's a negative or a positive. It's a, it's not about what the answer is. It's about what the answer makes happen, right? So let's test them one at a time. If I take the negative seven and I test it back up here in the original problem, right away we have a problem. Because if you put negative seven right where that arrow is pointing, what's negative seven plus five? Negative seven plus two. Sorry, I'm crossing my thoughts. Negative seven plus two is negative five. And we know that the square root cannot produce a negative five, right? Therefore, we can right away rule out negative seven. And again, it's not because seven is negative. It's because he made something happen that's not allowed, right? 
And then if you go and check nine, go put nine in place of both of the X's up top, you wind up, it works. On the left side, you get nine plus two is 11. And then on the right side, you wind up with the square root of 121, which is also 11. So X equals nine works just fine. So he can have a box. So that's not difficult, really. <clears throat> I'd say it's a little bit harder than the ones from last week, but <clears throat> assuming you can survive the square square multiply double and that you know how to factor a quadratic, you should be no worries there. So those ones you recognize as numbers 1, 4, 6, 7, and 10. Those are the nice ones on the worksheet where you only have the one root. So you get the root by itself, square, um, no bad at all. This one is where it gets a little bit harder. And if you, I don't know, I was going to say we could change the variables, but I don't want to confuse anyone that might watch this later. So um, just be careful with your Bs and try to be uh, somewhat neat about this. When you get a problem like this where there are two radicals, make sure you do not have the radicals on the same side. So you want to have them separated. And the thing about the negative one is that there's really no good place to put him. Um, you could make a case that maybe, hey, we should move it to the other side so that it becomes a plus one. At the end of the day, really, it's just going to be an annoyance no matter which side we put it on. So these are the hard ones. And um, let's get to it. So because you can't, quote unquote, you know, get the radical by itself, now that they're separated, it's time to just do what we do, and that is square both sides. So here we go. This is what we tried to practice on Thursday, and this is that the, the application of square square multiply double on, I mean, fundamentally, it's the same process. It just is sort of more next level -y just because the, the things we're working with are scarier. So let's get to it. And I'll color code this again for you. So um, I always feel like I would like the colors. So I can't help but selfishly assume that you would like them as well. So there. So those are the two things in the square root or in the, in the parentheses on the left-hand side. If I square the yellow guy, what do I get? One. I get one. Good. And if I square the purple guy, what do I get? Yeah, I just get negative 1 minus 5b. As we know about squaring a square root, really the only effect or impact that it has is it just lifts the root right off and everything comes right down. Any questions about that so far? And this is the, the thing about like, this next part's hard because it's not a math problem and you guys like to, not you guys, like specifically, I just mean like my students tend to want this to be a mathematics problem and it's not. So if you multiply the yellow by the purple, just multiply them, what do you get? What if I told you just to stick them together, what would you get? That's exactly right. And the thing about this step is that it's so not mathy, it's so easy that we think like we must be doing something wrong. Like, well, shouldn't I multiply negative one and negative one and get positive one? And the answer is God, no. That's a square root sign. It's not a set of parentheses. You can't distribute into a square root sign. So when I just multiply yellow by purple, it's really more not, it's not so much that I'm multiplying as much as I'm just literally like gluing them together, right? And then when I double this thing over here, what do I get? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try this. If I had negative, if I had negative one X and I said double that, what would you get? you'd get negative two X. Let's try that again. What if I had negative one Y and I said double it, what would you get? You'd get negative two Y. What if I had negative one times the square root of M and I said double it, what would you get? You'd get negative two times the square root of M. What you need to put in your notes or somewhere in your brain is that when I tell you to double something like this, really all I'm asking you to do is to double that number right there. 
Okay, you're not changing the root, you're not changing what's inside the root, you're merely changing the number that you have. And double a negative number is just multiplying it by two. Double negative one is negative two. So when we do the yellow and purple mashup and we multiply or glue them together, however you want to say that, and we double it, we just double the number I have in the red box and that becomes a negative two. So in the center of this, we have minus two times the square root of negative one minus five B. I really don't want to move on until I feel like you guys are okay with what just happened. Uh, because when we do something like um, x minus 4 times x minus 4, also known as x minus 4 squared, when I multiply this out, um, x times x or x squared, of course, is just x squared, right? And then negative four times negative four is, of course, just plus 16. You would agree. But would you also agree that this is exactly the same as this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I multiply the negative four and the x together, like if you took this negative four and this x and you multiplied them together, you would agree that that multiplication occurs twice in this problem, right? Yeah. That's why we double. The multiply double at the end is just a time saver so that we don't have to write out our squares like this, which of course you're welcome to. You okay? 100%? Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else have any holdups on this particular stage? So that to me, like I view these problems as sort of like there's a boss battle and there's three bosses and you have to fight them like consecutively. Boss one, we have survived. And now there's a boss two coming up that we have to survive, and then there'll be a third boss. And the third boss technically will should generally be the easiest, but in this case, it's really not. So, so far, so good. Okay, so now we have to, of course, square the right-hand side, and that doesn't really deserve any respect. So when I square the right side, I just lift off the root, and I get 2b plus 3. Okay, one step down, two to go. The next part, uh, who remembers from Thursday what we have to do now? We enter phase two at this point. Nice work. And there's also, there's going to be a number with it, and we do need to include that in part of the getting it by itself. So as I like to use colors, because, um, again, why not? Everything in this green box is my objective. Get that by itself. Notice there is a square root, but there's also the number that's glued to it. So that whole package needs to be isolated. So our job is just to do a little basic algebra here. And if you look at these numbers right here, there's a one, that red arrow pointing at him, there's a one. And then over here, how convenient, there's a minus one. What are those going to mean? Zero. So the two ones that I have arrows pointing at can effectively just go away. Uh, normally I would say we have to combine them and move them to the other side, but like, what's the point, right? It's just going to be a row. But in order to get that green box by itself, I also have to pick up this minus 5b, throw it over, turn it into a plus 5b, and that leads us to this right here. For those of you guys that were here Thursday, you'll remember that it was at this point, both times we did, we did two examples like this in our notes, both times something really beneficial happened at this stage. Does anyone by chance remember what it was? Yeah, we were able to divide all the numbers. And again, I like my little arrows, so I'm going to point to them. If you were to watch the video or look back at your notes from Thursday, you would um, see that all the numbers with the little red arrows pointing at them, like on Thursday, they were like, you know, four, eight, and 12. And we were like, oh, jackpot, let's divide them all by four. You know, and this does not work. And so this is a significantly more difficult situation because I can't just divide everything by the, I mean, someone earlier said, why don't you just divide them all by negative two? And I had to pause the recording. I'm re-recording today because I just didn't think it went well. But um, I had to pause that just while I had a discussion with this particular young man about the fact that it don't write down what I'm about to write down. But if you do decide to divide everything by negative two, and you're going to wind up with the square root by itself, 
but that's the only good news. And now you get negative seven halves of B minus three halves. And then when you go to square this side, you have to square, square, multiply, double with fractions. So sorry if that's a weak sales pitch, but my point is you should not divide at this stage unless everyone agrees to it. Otherwise you're gonna get fractions. And we tend to not particularly love fractions, right? It'll work if you do, <clears throat> but as the guy who is trying to teach this to uh, 33 people all on the same day, um, I would like to take the path of least resistance. And to me, what we're about to do is far and away the least resistant. So let's do this. So we've arrived at where uh, Giovanna said we had to get, and that was get the radical by itself. And now it's time to square both sides. So actually, there's a little bit of work to do on both sides this time. I usually find that there's one easy side and one hard side. These both have a little bit of a kick to them. So let's talk about the left side first. I'm gonna write down what it becomes and then you and I are gonna have a quick discussion about how did I get that. So, and this isn't one of those times where I'm gonna like mess up on purpose and see if you can catch my boo-boo. Can you tell me how I did that? I think maybe I know what you said there. Um, this this is the math you always want to do. Whenever you guys originally, which you don't do much anymore, but whenever you used to mess up like x plus two squared and say it was like x squared plus four. This is what you wanted to be doing. And this the reason we can get away with this is because there's no addition or subtraction inside the, the parentheses. Uh, we're actually going over this in Algebra 1 right now, just basic properties of exponents. If you take this exponent 2 and you square the first part right there, negative 2 gets squared, and that's where the 4 comes from, right? And then follow the purple. If you take the negative 2 and square this, that's where this came from. But I have to keep it in parentheses because it started as something times something. It has to end still as something times something. Any questions about that? Nice. Okay, then let's head to the right side. In this side, we got a square, square, multiply, double. Again, the answer that gets you kicked out of class is if you say 49b squared plus 9. Oh, boy, that's terrible, right? So, we, yeah, okay, good. So it's going to start with a 49b squared. And, yeah. It's going to end with a plus nine. But how dare we disrespect the overall situation and just leave it like that, right? What's the middle term going to be? Plus 42b. Nice job. Any questions so far? I feel like we have now survived the second boss battle. Um, if you can navigate killing the radical once and then rearranging, re-squaring and killing the radical again, I feel like we're two thirds of the way home. And now with all the radicals gone, it's our time just to solve the equation. What do your uh, instincts tell you we have to do at this point in time? Yeah, let's distribute on the left. You don't need a dork like me to tell you that. So if you take the four and shoot it through, the left side becomes negative four minus 20b. And now what does all your algebra knowledge tell you we have to do? Yeah, let's get everything to equal to zero. And we're definitely going to choose the right-hand side because that's where the 49b squared is kind of rooted down. So 49b squared says I'll stay here. How many b's will we have? And then when we add four, what do we get? And we made it to the end. So now we're embarking on boss battle number three, which is solving the quadratic. Sometimes this boss is a joke, right? Sometimes the boss, if it were a boss like x squared minus 4x minus 12, like that's not really much of a boss battle, right? That's some light work factoring there. This one is a lot more intimidating. It gives off a, a stink right away, like a I can't be factored kind of stink. And the logic of, like, the way most people factor, 
is they like to break the 49B squared up into pieces. It's just human nature that we feel like that's more successful. And logic would kick in and you'd realize that this is impossible because no matter where you put this 13, if I put it right there, then it has to multiply by the seven and I get 91. And I've overshot the 62, you see. So then you think to yourself, well, that's no big deal. I'll just problem solve this by moving the 13 over here. But then you're still screwed because now you're still making 91. Do you see what I'm getting at here? So we know that that kind of factoring can't work. What's my other option? Yeah, which is feels so odd in a case like this. If you're a mathy number person, you probably spotted it like right away. That if you put all your 49 Bs over here and just one B right there, and then, you know, don't do anything crazy. Like don't put the 13 on the far right because then you're really blowing it out of the water. But it's such a beautiful thing that if you put the 13 right there, it never gets a chance to, it really gets neutered. Like all of its ability is neutered out. It never gets to multiply by the 49, which is pretty cool. So put a plus there and a plus there. Yeah. And that does factor like that. It's a really cool kind of gratifying factoring problem. So what are our answers going to be? So negative 13 40 ninths. So I feel like that's three boss battles survived. And now the only thing left is maybe we got to go just do a little cleanup work. Um, we do have to vet these answers to see if they work. Remember, that's just part of our part of the thing we do. So let's start with negative one. If I go all the way back to the beginning of the problem and I put negative one back up in the beginning, I'm sorry that I've got such vandalism here, but follow the green arrow up on top. If I put negative one right there, then inside the square root right here where I'm moving my pen, it says negative one minus five times negative one, which is negative one plus five, which is four, and the square root of four is two, and negative one plus two is one. And then on the right-hand side, if you put your um, uh, negative 1 where the other green arrow is pointing, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. The moral of the story is that negative 1 checks out just fine. So negative 1 can have a box. I can tell you that when you go to check the other one, the negative 13 49 you really should use a calculator. I'm, I'm generally not a huge proponent of just taking the easy route, but in this case, honestly, it's just a sensible choice is to, to take and use a calculator. So uh, I'm going to take negative 13 49. This is what the left side would say. It would say negative 1 plus the square root of negative 1 minus 5 times negative 13 40 ninths, and I would hit enter on my calculator. After that, hit enter. <clears throat> and I've noticed kind of throughout the day that I tend to be one of about four people who's actually typing this in. So I'll go ahead and type it in with those of you that are ready to go. So we have negative one plus the square root of uh, negative one minus five times negative 13 divided by 49. And I have to close two sets of parentheses. And just FYI, I got negative 0.42857 dot, dot, dot. There's more. But why is that enough for me to stop caring? Why do we care? No, it's not. This, this whole answer this whole red box equals that. Go back and look at the original problem. If the left side equals negative 0.42857, why is that enough for me to stop? Because what? Very good. Because the other side is a square root. And as we've learned, a square root never spits out negative answers. So if the right side says square root of whatever, 
it doesn't matter. The square root of whatever is never going to equal negative 0.42857. So you can take the negative 1349 and feel free to give it the old adios amigo. That is a long math problem. Again, some of you will do it quicker than others. Some of us that we can expect 10, 15 minutes on just one problem alone. So that was where I had intended to just stop recording, stop talking, all that. Um, do you guys feel like you want to do more or? No. Yeah, you want to do another one? Number three? We can do number three. Let's take a look at number three. Um, what do you think of the setup? Is it ready to go? Yeah, it's good enough, right? Uh, for those of you who like to take every little advantage that you can, like look for every little workaround that you can, uh, not a bad idea. Let's try something this time. Let's try moving that five over to the left. Do you see the benefit of that? Yeah. And even though I personally don't care, and I know a lot of you probably don't really care either, by making it a plus, we might avoid some pitfalls. So, you know, if you wanted to, like we could have done that FYI on problem two. We could have added the two, the one across. Let's see if by adding the five this time, if maybe you feel like the whole experience is more pleasant, perhaps. But I'm going to go ahead and move it to the left like I did on the board. And then it's ready now for us to square both sides. And if you're struggling with what I have up there in red on the TV, you're not alone. I hope that if I'm any good and we're any good as a team, that we can get you over this hurdle quickly, that you're not going to be scared of this anymore. So let's do it. <clears throat> if I take um, the first part of this and I square it, what do I get? And then I move my pencil a few inches, a couple inches maybe to the right, and I leave a space. And then I head over and I do, again, the easy part. If I square the plus 5, what do I get? So I'm going to put plus 25. But notice, again, this beautiful space that I very intentionally left in the center because that's where the good part, the cool part, the tough part's going to go. So if you just take the two things inside the square root sign, and I will call them yellow box thing, feel like no matter how many times I explain this, there's still going to be someone who turns this into a math problem. It's not. Take the yellow box thing and the green box thing and paste them together. What do you get? Yeah, you get five roots of who really cares, right? The stuff inside doesn't change. It's just five objects. And if you double five objects, what do you get? You get 10 objects. So in the center goes plus 10 objects. And I'm not going to write objects like I'm writing 10 minus 2p. But at no point in that multiply double step do we give any creps about what's inside the root. It's just a thing. Feel like that was okay? Okay, right side, square it. What do we get? No, you just get 4p plus 5. So there it was, boss battle number one, fought one um, on to battle number two. And what's our current objective? Mm -hmm. So this little green bubble cloud thing is our objective. We're like, hey, dude, hang on a second. I'm going to get you by yourself. So in order to do that, I'm going to put a bunch of things together. Uh, for example, I could like add the 2p across and that would give me 6p's over here on the right. Okay, that was nice. And then I can do just again, very basic algebra. I could take this 10 and this 25 and add them together to make 35. And then to, I got to subtract that to the other side. What's 5 minus 35? So what are we, anything worthy of note? We can't, and it's not great 
but it's certainly better than nothing. So let's take a moment and divide all the numbers that are not inside the square root by two. Take advantage of this opportunity to make the numbers a little bit smaller. So this 10, this six, and this 30 are all being divided by two, which results in five times the object equals three p's minus half of 30 is 15. And now what? Yeah, square both sides. And this, like was the case in the last problem, this is a little bit of work on both sides. The left side, once you get good at it, is really actually pretty easy. Uh, but when I square something like that, it's like a double squaring because they're attached by times. Listen, if there were, follow the yellow arrow, if there were a plus or a minus right there, I would not disrespect the math gods the way I'm about to. If there were a plus or minus, I'd have to go full bore, square, square, multiply, double on this thing. But when they're just attached by times, you can just distribute the exponents like you've always wanted to. So like this two says, I'm gonna give myself to you. What do we get? We get 25. And then the two says, I'm going to give myself to you. And what do we get? No plus because it's attached by times. <laughs> It started out as five times something. Now it's five squared times something squared. Like that's sometimes a little difficult for people. The right side is full blown square square multiply double because of the minus sign in the middle. The minus sign in the middle takes us to the next level. It says, don't disrespect this process. You gotta go big here. So when I square the right side, I square the 3p first and I get 9p squared. And then I square the negative 15 and I get plus 225. But again, note that I'm leaving an intentional space so that I don't forget the multiply double. If you take the two dudes at the parentheses and you multiply them together, don't double them, just multiply them. What do you get? So if you take the two things in parentheses, clearly I think I need to keep drawing my colorful shapes. So if you take, I know, if you take red guy and purple guy, and the trouble with it is you guys, when I stop being there to help you with this, I'm not going to walk around to all your papers and draw cute little colorful shapes. That's why I say you need to somehow recognize at this point what we're doing. Take red guy and purple guy and multiply them. What do you get? You do, you get negative 45P. Double that, what do you get? You do, you get negative 90P. And we have survived now the second boss battle. The first one was to kill the first radical. The second, the second boss battle is to kill the straggler, the one that survived the first attack. And now we're down to no more radicals, just basic algebra one, algebra two, quadratic factor solve kind of thing. So let's distribute. As Cooper prematurely wanted to do a couple of minutes ago, let's take that 25 and distribute it through. So we get 250 minus 50p equals 9p squared minus 90p plus 225. And then, of course, we're going to select the right side because... That's where all the good stuff is happening. The, the x squared or the p squared is on the right. All right, how many p's are we going to have? And what's our constant going to be? Yeah. And we made it. So the question now is, is the factoring going to break down into... It's always been the question is, does it break down into this template or does it break down into this template? So you already know because you've tried it. Is that correct? Okay, good. Well, no, I just, I didn't think you answered my question. Good. Yeah, so the second one's gonna work if we do a five and a five. And the thing about it, the reason this dynamic works is because 
One of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So we're going to give tons of weight, like tons of power to the negative 45. So if I put a minus right here, that, that lends a ton of weight to this 45p. It makes it negative 45p. And then if I put a little plus on this, then it uh, just gives me back a little baby plus 5p, which is perfect because it scooches me right back up to minus 40p, which is exactly where I want it to be. So what are my answer? Uh, sorry, I don't have my equal zeros. That's uh, my bad. So what are my answer candidates? Yep, and or p equals 5. So um, as is generally the case, uh, and don't start to make theories about, it, by the way, if, if, if this were true, if the negative ones always didn't work, I want you to know, I would tell you if it's negative, always cross it out. That is not true. Don't start looking for patterns like that because it'll get you nothing but uh, red marks on your test. So please don't think like, oh, this is two in a row. I must always cross out the negatives. Mm -mm. Uh, you know, I would tell you if that were the case. So it's just a patient process. You have to grab your calculator and go back and put negative five ninths in place of all of the um, square root signs or in place of all the variables inside the square root signs. And when you work it out, type it in, click, 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 hit enter, you will realize as you did on the last one that negative five nines does not work. And if you'd like to have some help with how to put that into your calculator, just come see me, I'd be happy to help you. You probably don't need a calculator though for the whole number ones, those are pretty, pretty silly, right? So if you put five in place of all the P's, um, what is that? You get zero, equals, am I saying that right? Uh, negative five plus, and then if you put five in place of the P on the right, you get the square root of 25, which is five, and negative five plus five does equal zero. So since zero equals zero, then we box this one up. There will be problems where neither of them work, in which case you, of course, write no solution. And there might be, are, there are instances in which they both work, in which case you box them both. We've seen this before. They can both work, one of them can work, or neither of them can work. Was that okay, Emma? Did you feel like you got that? Okay. You guys okay to press on without me from here? Okay. Well, I'll keep the recording live. I just won't. I'll pause it. But then if you guys have more questions, then I'll throw them, throw them back on here. So, Problem five. Um, I, I feel like if I can give you uh, an advantage from the get-go, then I'm, then I'm doing my job a little bit better. I look at number five, and I think I can do better. And so the first thing I notice is that the roots cannot be on the same side, right? And so I have a choice to make. Um, can we all agree that it makes perfect sense to move the root of 3x plus 4. Like we all agree with that, right? Because I can really solve two problems if I do that. I can solve the problem of getting the roots off the same side, but I can also turn it into a positive. But there's even another step that I can take. Do you see that further to that, there's something else I can do to make my life a little bit easier? You can, and that's why I wanted to get this on the recording. I don't intend to do this whole problem with you, but here's the way the setup really should look. If you take the negative square root of 3x plus 4 and you move it to the left, then it becomes the positive square root of 3x plus 4. You don't need a math degree or an education degree to understand why people are generally more receptive to working with positive numbers. But like I said, if I move the root over there, then I can also move that negative three to the other side. So the, the square root of five minus X just kind of watches all of this happen. He just kind of sits there and watches while one root flies overhead and then some weird creepy three flies overhead. But when everything lands in its correct home, the problem should look like this. I hope you understand that. I don't, did I answer your question, Cooper? Okay, so this really, if you had me if, do this 100 times, I would do it this way all 100 times, taking as many negatives out as I possibly can. Hope that, hope that makes sense. 